My name is Associate Professor Scott Clark and I'm a, a consultant psychiatrist that works across the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital uh, and the Western Community Mental Health Service. People that suffer with schizophrenia have experiences that are outside um, the normal experiences of everyone else, so they can hear and see things um, that are not real, that other people won't see. They can also have a disorganisation in their speech and their thinking, so that their speech will sound jumbled and, and uh, won't, won't all hang together as, as, as coherent speech. Their behaviour can also be disorganised and that can be uh, quite dangerous to themselves or to others uh, in some cases, but mostly to themselves, so people uh, can't organise um, and can't make safe decisions about what they're doing day to day. There is also a loss of motivation uh, in, in some cases. Um, there is a, um, a reduced thinking, so people think more slowly or think less. And there can be some cognitive impairments, some thinking impairments, uh, so people aren't, again, that affects people's decision making day to day. There is some uh, suggestion that there's a genetic component and some people are more at risk because schizophrenia runs in families but many mental illnesses do uh, have, a, have a genetic learning. By no means does that mean that children of a, a parent with schizophrenia will get schizophrenia. I guess across development one of the models that we have is that there is a difference in brain development. So early in brain develop, development we develop a lot of new synapses as the mind is evolving. And, uh, and across um, sort of uh, youth, uh, those synapses are pruned as we get smarter and, uh, and our thoughts get more organised. What also happens is the nerves in the brain uh, get a myelin sheath which allows the nerves to conduct uh, more efficiently. And, and also we develop more new neurons that are inhibitory that prevent, um, uh, I, I guess, impulsive behaviour and they grow throughout youth. But what tends to happen in schizophrenia is that around youth there is increased pruning of synaptic connections, so uh, there's, uh, there's more taken away than would normally. It really is a disorder of communication amongst areas of the brain, and it's because these underlying biological pathologies occur. I mean, that, that, that is the biological perspective of schizophrenia, but schizophrenia um, involves trauma, it involves, you know, that's a risk factor, um, and involves the, the, the personal experience, and that's not to, um, to minimise a person's um, background history, their developmental history, and how that contributes to, to the presentation. There is a concept called the ultra-high risk state where people develop early symptoms which can be um, strange experiences, you know, hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there or coming up with strange ideas that aren't connected to reality. But uh, lower level symptoms, they can have a sudden deterioration in function so they can get the negative symptoms first. Um, and uh, I guess they would present to their, uh, I mean they may be behaving oddly to their family. At school they might drop in their performance. Um, or in a more um, florid state, if something happens acutely, um, they might present to, you know, in crisis to police or ambulance or to, or to hospital. Substance use is, is an important risk factor and particularly with um, high rates of amphetamine use around Australia now, we see a lot of people in acute um, psychotic distress coming in uh, after using amphetamines. Cannabis is also a risk. The challenge is, as psychiatrists, for us to tell if the psychosis will go away and never come back after a, uh, an amphetamine, a drug-based psychotic episode or not. Um, and so uh, the first presentation is, is quite distressful and, and for, for the individual, for the family, I guess for the health service depending on how people present. And it's our job as um, uh, healthcare workers to try and um, minimise distress, um, uh, uh, sort of maximise education and understanding, involve the family as much as possible, as much as practical, and um, support the person on a recovery journey using trauma-informed methods, so trying to, to, to prevent um, uh, adverse events in, in hospital and, and get them um, back in touch with reality using antipsychotic medications as soon as possible. Mm -hmm.